Algebra 2, 2.1a, we're going to remove fractions or decimals from equations. When we see fractions or decimals in an equation, we can clear them out of the equation by using the multiplication property of equality. This is called clearing the equation of fractions or decimals. We eliminate them from the equation. So if we see fractions like 1 sixth a plus 1 half equals 4 thirds, we just multiply each term on both sides of the equation by the least common denominator, the LCD. So 6 would be the least common denominator between a 6, a 2, and a 3. So we're going to multiply each term, this one, this one, and this one, by 6 over 1. We can distribute it on this side and multiply it on this side. We're going to get 6 over 6a plus 6 over 2 and 24 over 3. And when we simplify this, we get 1. Same numerator and denominator, so we get 1a. We get a 3 here, and 24 divided by 3 is 8. So now we have a plus 3 equals 8, and we can isolate a using additive inverses, right? That's the addition property of equality. And we can subtract 3 from both sides of the equation and get a equals 5. Now we can check this by plugging in 5 for a, and we can see that it does work out. That makes 5, 6, and when we add that, we end up getting 4 thirds on each side. See? So just find the least common denominator for each term, not just the first term, for each term, okay? Here's another one. We have 1 seventh x plus 3 fourteenths equals 5 fourteenths. We multiply each term by that least common denominator, 14, as 14 over 1. Because of fractions, it makes it easier on our eyes to multiply straight across numerators and denominators, right? We get 14 over 7, right? We get 14 times 3 over 14, and we get 5 times 14 over 14. And in this case, instead of multiplying and distributing it like this, which is what we would want to do, because that's how our brain is, is thinking. It's like, let's just distribute these. It's a lot easier to factor out, just cancel out. So if we assign this 14 over 1 to each term, we can cancel out. This 14 is two 7s, and that's a 1 7, and we cancel them out as a 2 and a 1. Now we have 2 over 1. And if we do it to this one, we've got 14 times 3 over 1 times 14. This 14 and that 14 can cancel out, fa factor out as 1s. So we got 1 times 3 over 1. And this one, this 14 cancels out that 14 going this way. So we end up with 5 times 1 over 1. It's a lot easier than doing 5 times 14 and 3 times 14. We just factor them out and go quicker, okay? So now we can see we've got 2x plus 3 equals 5. Just subtract that 3 from each side to isolate this x. We need to start getting rid of the things on this side of the equation. Using the addition property of equality, we can add or subtract the same thing from each side and keep the equation balanced, right? That creates a zero pair here, right? Plus 3 minus 3. That eliminates it. So now we've got 2x equals 2. Now, we can multiply each side by the reciprocal of 2 as a half, but it's a lot easier to just divide each side by this coefficient 2. I showed you that in the last video when we were doing the word problems drawing a diagram. So we can just divide each side by this coefficient 2, and that makes a 1, x, and we can see that x equals 1. See? We can check it by plugging in 1, and we can see it works because that makes 1 7th, and if we make them have common denominators, it's going to be 2 14ths, which is 5 14ths. So it works. See? All right. And then decimals, to clear out decimals, all we need to do is we need to multiply each term of the equation by a power of 10 that's large enough to clear every decimal. So if we look at this problem, We've got 12.4. Well, that's only one decimal space to get rid of it, so that's 10 to the first power. 
Well, this one's got 2, so that's 10 to the second power, 10 times 10, and this one's also got 2. So in order to clear every decimal, we're going to have to go with the 10 times 10. Okay? That is not big enough to clear them all away. We'd end up with 36.4 and 14.8, and we'd still have decimals. So let's multiply them each by 10 to the second power, or 100. We need to distribute this to each term. Okay? So we end up with 1,240 minus 364a equals 148. We need to isolate this a, don't we? So we can start by getting rid of the terms on this side of the equation. So we subtract 1240 from each side. That's going to give us a negative 364a that drops down, right? This made a zero pair, and 148 minus 1,240 is a negative 1,092. We divide each side by this negative 364, so that makes a positive A, because negative and negative divided makes a positive, and this makes a positive 3, because negative 364 times 3 is negative 1092, see? We can check it by plugging in 3 for a into the equation. So instead of this point, this 3.64a, we have 3.64 times 3, which comes out to 10.92. And when we add it, when we subtract it from the 12.4, we do get 1.48. So it worked. All right. In this one, this has only one hop to get rid of the decimal, and this one only has one hop to get rid of the decimal. So in this case, 10 to the first power is enough to move the decimal one place to the right to get rid of it. So we multiply every single term, not just this first one, but every single term by that 10. So we end up with 63m minus 96 equals 30. We need to isolate this m to solve, to find out what m is. So we start getting rid of the terms on its side of the equation. So we're going to add 96 to create a zero pair here to do the opposite, right? Make a zero. But then we have to add 96 to this side. So we have 126 on that side. 63m equals 126. We can divide both sides by this coefficient 63. That makes a 1. Same numerator and denominator. We have m equals 2 because 63 can go into 126 two times. We take 2, we plug it in for m, see if it works, and 6.3 times 2 is 12.6 minus 9.6, yep, that's 3, it works. See? We just need to remember to make sure the power of 10 that we're using to eliminate that decimal is big enough to eliminate all of them in the entire equation, okay? You just want to make sure you check it to make sure there's no mistakes. Because sometimes you could do a multiplication too quick or division too quick and or have a wrong sign. So you want to check it just to absolutely make sure. That could increase your grade a lot just by checking your equations. Okay? Our next video is... 2.1b, and it's going to be about equations with parentheses. And if you go to this description of this video, you can see the Algebra 2 playlist that's slowly growing. We're now in Chapter 2, so all the Chapter 1 videos are in there. And each day, this playlist is going to get longer and longer as I add each video to it. There's also going to be a link to the Algebra 1 8.3c, where we talked about clearing fractions from systems of equations back in Algebra 1. Now, if you're really lost about finding the description of this video and you're on an Android, when you look at the video, there's a little triangle here. You're going to see this little downward triangle. And if you touch that, the whole description is going to open up and you'll see all the links, all right? If you're on a laptop or a regular computer, you can see it and just click See More. There's a little thing that says see more, and then you can just click on that and it'll all open up, all right? So, or you could ask somebody, how do you get to the description of a YouTube video, all right? But it's pretty easy. You just click on that little thing. We're going to go on to equations with parentheses, and I hope you're doing okay, and I hope I see you there.
Bye.